G'day, I'm Ash. Around this time last year, I published a video about 10 vehicles that should be coming to War Thunder. In fact, I published two videos in which I discussed which vehicles I'd love to see and which aircraft I'd love to see. Following on from that tradition, we've got two videos coming up, and this one is dedicated to 10 more aircraft that you'd like to see or I'd like to see in War Thunder. So, you know, War Thunder is a fairly diverse game. It's got plenty of room for expansion. But this list of aircraft is in no particular order, and I've picked these vehicles specifically because, well, they're interesting in a way, but not, I guess, game-breaking. Anyhow, let's jump straight into it. If you haven't seen the last installments, I'll leave a card up in the top. And without ado, number one is the British Aerospace Hawk 200, which is a light reconnaissance training aircraft as well as a multi-role fighter. It does all of the things you really want to. They built 62 of these things from 1990 to 2002, probably fill that gap between the, the Tornado and possibly any other aircraft that might come in the future. Essentially, you have something that can go 1,037 kilometers an hour, can arm with sky flashes as well as aim on sidewinders, but it obviously can equip aim 120s, the uh, which probably won't be in War Thunder anytime soon, as well as AGM 65s, the Mark 82 bombs, and the Paveway 2s. So, an interesting aircraft there made by Britain, and it'd be a nice addition to sort of fill some gaps. Anyway, number two on the list is actually something that I've been wanting for a very long time the Grumman A6 Intruder. Now, the Grumman A6 is a twin all-weather attack aircraft, mainly used by carriers. Now, they built 693 of these things, and the first flight was in 1960. They produced them until 1992. It was used for the US uh, Marine Corps, as well as the US Navy. And, I mean, this thing is legendary for many reasons, not only from film, but to everything else. And there's several different variants, and too many to really cover. But... Essentially, you get a whole ton of ordnance and a bloody a lot of just different things. Maximum speed, though, is only 640 miles an hour, and so it'd be somewhat subject to, well, aerospace restrictions. But it's so iconic that it even had its own movie, Flight of the Intruder. That being said, though, with that kind of iconic level of inf infamacy, it kind of needs to be in War Thunder at some point. Number three on the list is actually quite an interesting vehicle. The more I read into this one, the more I really want it. It is the Kawasaki Ki-64, an experimental vehicle which Japan experimented with. What it is, is a fighter aircraft that was developed in 1943. It could hold four 20mm uh, Ho-5 cannons and two 12.7mm machine guns, had a max speed of 690 kilometers, and was contra-rotating uh, three-bladed propellers. So it is very interesting. And because it was a heavy single-seat fighter with unusual designs, it really is subject to something of a bit of curiosity for me. And I quite like the look of this thing. It reminds me of the Seafire FR-47, although a little more streamlined. Unfortunately, the project really didn't go ahead, but it'd be nice to see this as either an event vehicle or as some sort of filler for the Japanese tech tree. Let's be honest, all minor nations need love. And while most of the vehicles in this list might be prototype or experimental, the Fairy Spearfish is a very interesting aircraft, something of which is it's just interesting to me. It's basically a British Avenger, and what it ends up by being is a two-seat strike fighter that was also a carrier-based torpedo dive bomber that was ordered by the fleet air arm during the Second World War, and it didn't launch until 1945. Now, they built five of these things, and interestingly enough, the top speed of it's about 292 miles an hour, about 470 kilometers. And what it can carry is one torpedo or two 2,000 pound bombs. But its design is just so interesting and so just strange that I, I just love it. And it's just something out of the ordinary. How would it fit in war that? I don't actually know. Britain's actually missing quite a lot of its fleet air arm aircraft as is. The Fulmar, the Barracuda, all sorts of the Gannet, for example. So I don't necessarily know how this would fit in, but it's an interesting aircraft that I thought I'd share. Continuing on from the fantastic aircraft that unfortunately got nerfed into the ground, that being the uh, Sagittario, this is the Afer Ariete. I don't know why it's Italy used the term Ariete quite a lot, but essentially this is a development, a further development, of the Sagittario. 
be nice to fill in as if Italy lacks aircraft. Interestingly, this thing has two engines, a Rolls-Royce Derwent turbo engine for thrust, and then a Saw turbojet engine. Again, another Rolls-Royce engine. But why would you want this in War Thunder? Well, again, that's another Sagittario, I guess. I suppose it's unique and Italy can use all it can get. Number six on the list is the Bell XP-83, another experimental jet aircraft designed by the United States, the Bell Aircraft Corporation. It flew in 1945 as an early jet. It was supposed to be an escort fighter, but unfortunately it had a lack of power and was soon eclipsed by stuff like the P-59 and other types. Essentially what you have is something that can do 522 mile an hour, about 840 kilometers, equipped with the most impressive set of armament I've seen, 650 caliber machine guns, full 20 millimeter cannons, and a 37, as well as uh, six 15.2 millimeter experimental machine guns. Number seven on the list is not the Su-15 that you'd be thinking about. Instead, it's the 1949 variant, and it looks like this. An incredibly interesting looking aircraft that was an all-weather interceptor that never reached production. Max speed of about 985 kilometers an hour, 612 mile an hour, with a service range of basically fuck all, but it had two 37 millimeter guns and a radar. They built one of these things and the first flight was 11th of January 1949. And the only reason I like it is because it has such a happy face. Just look at it. Number eight on the list is the Kaiser Fleet Wings XBTK. Now, striking as that name is, it's a torpedo and dive bomber developed for the United States Navy starting in 1944. They only built five examples and the contract was terminated in, in September of 1946. However, that diving characteristics was superior to any other dive bomber in service or under development. With a top speed of 373 mile an hour, 600 kilometers, it can hold two 12 millimeter cannons and have one center station carrying a 2,000 pound bomb or a different high velocity aircraft rockets. Now the next one, number nine, is the Polycarpov I-17. It's not exactly a well-known aircraft. Essentially, for me, it looks like a racing aircraft. In fact, it is. Essentially, it's a single seat fighter. They built three of these things and the first flight was September of 1934. However, it was armed with one toy millimeter Chevac and four 7.62 uh, machine guns as well. And it could also hold 200 kilogram bombs, but it was also, uh, the second prototype was displayed at the 1936 Salon d'Aeronautica in Paris. And it's just so art deco, I bloody love it. Whether or not it'll be useful, I don't exactly know. But this brings me to probably the least useful aircraft on this list, although close to home. The CAC Woomera. Essentially, you've got an Australian bomber aircraft design because obviously Australia was cut off from the rest of the world during the Second World War when Japan started invading most of Asia. And this aircraft was really interesting because it's got a three crew with a top speed of about 454 kilometers an hour. And it was armed with two 303 machine guns in the nose, two 20 mils in the nose, uh, four 303 machine guns in a rear firing remote control barbettes as a rear gunner, and a Vickers K machine gun in a ventral position. Could hold two torpedoes and two 500 pound bombs. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed that list of top 10 aircraft. Well, not really a top 10 aircraft, but 10 more aircraft that should be coming to War Thunder. Let me know if there's any others that you would like and what you think of the selection down below. Otherwise, you can go watch this video on why the Royal Navy launched a piano off a carrier.